Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back to a box opening. No, it's not a box opening video, but I'm going to start with opening the box and then and see where that see where that takes us. So. Uh, it's heavy. But what is it? <laughs> That's another alternator. Uh, this time. We've gone with a, an alternator from a BMW, as you can see, let me zoom you in there. It is a BMW 180 amp alternator. I'll try and give that a bit of a clean. There you go, should be able to see it a bit better now. BMW alternator. Now, why you ask if I got a BMW alternator? Well, two reasons. The number 180 is 180 amps. Now, I plan to turn this alternator into a motor. And 180 amps is more than 110 amps. Excuse me, while I get this. This is the old alternator that I've already turned into a motor. Hopefully you can see that. And that is a 110 amp alternator. Um, 110 amps at 14 volts is approximately 1500 watts. 180 amps at 14 volts is approximately 2,500 watts. So lots more watts, uh, therefore can handle more heat, therefore is more suitable as a motor for an e-bike or whatever. So that's the first reason. The first reason I bought it is because it's more powerful. Second reason, or the reason why I chose this particular one, uh, it's because it's incredibly plentiful. There are hundreds of these for sale. I got this one delivered for £15 off eBay. Now, 15 quid is it's for nothing, really, isn't it? So, what I plan to do is record the process of stripping down the top of this taking out all of the electrical, electronic uh, gubbins inside and turning it into a three-phase motor. And once I've finished doing that, I then plan to take it apart completely and see if it's possible to fit a permanent magnet because uh, having the magnet um, connected via the, the coils is not ideal much better if we can make it a permanent magnet and we might even go as far as to putting in hall sensors which would mean it could be used with um, a more powerful or sorry no, not necessarily more powerful but a sine wave controller uh, the sine wave controllers seem to be quite fussy they don't like working with uh, motors that do not have hall, hall effect sensors so we might end up doing that as well but we'll see how we'll one step at a time. First step we'll go for is we'll break it down, take out the electronic components and we'll turn this into a three-phase motor and then we'll test it using our e-bike controller. Well, I just want to check as well does this belt fit this motor? It does indeed. Beautiful, beautiful fit. 
That was the one thing I wasn't sure about with the um, the size of the these what would you call them splines or whatever you call them uh, on the the rotor. I wasn't sure exactly how uh, what what size they were, but they're fitting my belt, so that's good. Let's give it a spin. Nice and smooth. Great. Okay. All right, let's start breaking it down and taking off these bits here. So what we've got here is I presume these are the brushes going down onto the rotor. Uh, we don't need to worry about that if we're uh, we'll, we'll keep those there for now uh, because for the moment anyway we'll still be using those. But some of these other parts can be removed. Right. Okay, we'll just keep stripping it down. Seven more. I basically do not need any of these electronic items. There's um, a voltage regulator, I think, in this. A voltage regulator and a and out uh, to turn the three the um, the three phase voltage that comes out of an alternator into single phase, not even single phase, into DC. So it needs diodes to do that. See the brushes? Uh, I would say those brushes don't have long for this world actually. In fact, one of them is extremely short. So I'll not have long with I'll not be able to use it for long as a motor with those brushes. Now what I'm going to have to do is to cut some of these because those are the three faces coming out of the motor. You see those there? So those are the three phases coming up. So I need to cut the connection between those three phases and this. And once I've done... Oh, there's more. Ah, this is going to be a bit more complicated. There's three connections here and three connections here. So it's not going to be quite as simple as I thought. Hmm, we'll see. Bear in mind guys, I've never done this before, I've never seen one of these uh, alternators before. So if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, there's a very good reason for that. That's because I don't. Better. 
Mm -hmm. But I probably will need this later to. Um, I suspect I need this later to screw the this back on. Right, it's just a, a diode is clinging on there. Good. Okay, so don't need any of that. There's three diodes, there's three more diodes. Don't need those either. Um, I suppose just, if they don't come out, I just cut them off. That's fine. Oops. Oh, that is marked. God. Right. So, what have we got here? Been that long since I did one of these, I can't even remember what I'm doing. Ah, oh dear. Right, what do you reckon? That one of them has got the short to the others. That to that? Nope, to that. Okay, we got buzz now. Nope. 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 Oh, strange. What was I going to do? I put to that. I put to that. That goes to. Okay, those three are all shorting, and those three, I'm assuming, are all shorting now. Yeah. But there's no connection between any of these. That would tend to indicate that we have two completely separate systems. So we've got three phases here and three phases here. Now the question is are they in phase or not? In other words do we have a phase here, a phase here and a phase here and then a phase here, a phase here and a phase here? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Sing three wires coming out would have been much easier to deal with than six. It's not we can't use it. It's that we're not sure where the phases are going to be in the windings. just where they were connecting to the earth. Right, that's just the earth connections, I presume. These are the diodes. No. Those are diodes and those are diodes. My goodness, there's a lot of diodes here. But there needs to be lots of diodes for three phase. <sighs> I think I'm going to have to go away and do some research on this to see if I can work out how this can be how this can be set up to work correctly.
this may not work. <laughs> right. Best thing to do, take this with me, give it a wipe. If I can find the cloth, I'll give this a wee wipe. And then take it with me into the house and start doing some research on it to see if I can get circuit diagram or some some information on this particular item to see how it's put together and see how I can get how I can turn this into a three-phase motor which is what I plan to do. The thing is I know that if I wire those three wires to my uh, e-bike controller I could make this spin. Yes, okay, I'm going to have to put um, that back on and put the voltage to it. But that's that's simple. But do you just join that to that, join that to that, join that to that and connect your motor onto all, all six connections? Or does that go to that and that, to that? I don't know. I don't know what, the, what way it's going to have to be connected. <coughs> so that's what I'm going to have to look into now. Bummer. Nothing's ever simple. This is going to be a nice simple. I'm going to show you how to connect your alternator up as an e-bike motor or to an e-bike controller to make it make it into a motor and that's going to be I was going to be really smart and show you how to do it <laughs> should have known better me being smart doesn't happen too often anyway back in a bit I'm going to figure out a bit more of this <laughs>